The first organized form of primitive life was a tiny protozoan. Millions of protozoa populated the ancient seas. Early organisms. They moved about their aquatic environment, feeding on bacteria and other organisms. They were covered with hundreds of tiny whipping hairs called cilia and flagella that made movement possible. celled organisms evolved all life on earth. And the foundation of life, the cell, has endured unchanged since the first tiny organisms swam in the cradle of life, the sea. Every living being is made up of cells, the basic units of life on earth. cells reproduce themselves by dividing into two identical cells. This is a single body cell from a human being. And this is the process by which all cells reproduce. Now there are two cells, each exactly like the parent. The cell's nucleus is the extraordinary chemical substance DNA. The DNA is contained in 46 chromosomes in every cell of the human body. Each chromosome, in turn, is made up of thousands of genes, discrete segments of DNA which lie along the chromosome. Penetrating even deeper into the structure of the chromosome, we see the DNA molecules themselves. DNA contains all the genetic information of the cell, and it is the only living substance capable of reproducing itself exactly. Without DNA, duplication, and therefore life itself, is not possible. All DNA in all living organisms is chemically identical. But its arrangement in genes and chromosomes determines what the cells will become. Here, a tiny primitive organism, the protozoan. A massive complex mammal, the elephant. A palm tree swaying in the tropical breeze. Or a human being. time, a wondrous and complex process. The actual conception and growth of a new human being. Each beginning lies deep inside the mother's body in the ovaries. Each ovary contains a quarter of a million egg cells, which reach full development even before the woman herself was born. The eggs each contain 23 chromosomes, the mother's genetic contribution to her future offspring. During each menstrual cycle, the ovaries produce hormones which stimulate the growth of a single one of these eggs. At the midpoint of her cycle, the follicle, which encloses the egg and its protective layers, ruptures. This is ovulation. The egg travels through the fallopian tube, which connects the ovary and the uterus, or womb. In the tube, the egg waits for sperm from the father to fertilize it. The fertilized egg, now with genetic material from both parents, moves through the tube to the uterus, where it attaches itself to the nutrient-rich lining. And here, the ovary itself.
section, stained blue for better visibility, we see the hundreds of tiny egg cells. This one is nearly mature and is surrounded by its nutritive layers. When it is fully developed, the follicle which encloses the egg will swell, like this one, with fluid, the liquor folliculi. Inside the follicle, the egg and its nutritive layers floats in this water of life which has the same salt content as the sea. These fringes are activated by the hormones just before ovulation. They sweep over the surface of the ovary, searching for the newly released egg. ovulation nears, the fringes become filled with blood. The follicle at the center is about to burst. Directly above the white reflections, the liquor folliculi pours out of the follicle. Concealed somewhere within it is the egg. search for the newly released egg. It lies here, surrounded by a cloud of its own nutritive cells. It is only the size of a grain of sand. At the far right, the egg is drawn into the fallopian tube. Deep inside the egg, the nucleus of new life itself. This is the mouth of the fallopian tube. Its almost imperceptible muscle contractions move the egg along toward the uterus. Here the egg has reached the interior of the tube itself. These many folds of tissue are lined with tiny cilia which maintain a constant gentle motion that draws the egg along its length. The inside of the tube is actually only about twice the thickness of a single human hair. It takes the egg three to four days to travel this distance of only five inches. The translucent egg here lies in a muscle fold deep inside the fallopian tube, the fallopian tube. the diagonal edge below the egg, we can see a thin, shimmering layer of the cilia which line the tube. Gently moving the egg along, they are exactly like the cilia of the primitive protozoa. The egg must join with a sperm within 24 hours of leaving the ovary for conception to take place. If no sperm are present, the egg disintegrates and the same cycle will happen again the following month and throughout all the woman's childbearing years. This remarkable cycle is 